If you're here, then you're queer, and welcome back to my channel. Happy almost new year to you guys, and let's finish this year with another fantastic ghoul. Let's all get ready to howl at the moon with Miss Claudine Wolf. Of course, again, this is my take on the new G3 Monster High, so I will be using the new Claudine Wolf doll. The trio will not be complete without Miss Claudine. Alongside the other Monster High characters in this new universe, Claudine received a very drastic personality change. Also, she's half human now. From what I noticed, she's not as fierce and confident like in the original, and I really miss her Brooklyn accent too, and the fact that she was a fashionista. Of course, the goal is to give her back the glam and the edge and overall the OG vibes. I played around with several ideas, but I ended up with this edgy 70s meet 2000s. Her hair will be a mix of the 70s flip and the current wolf cut trend. I thought it would be so perfect for her to have this combination. Nana Osaki played a huge inspiration since she was always dressed in designer clothes, specifically lots of Vivian Westwood. I wanted to give her back her leather fur jacket because I've always thought that was so iconic and it's been making a comeback for some time now. I gave her a mesh top under a leather bralette to give dimension without taking focus from the jacket. Of course, animal print is a necessity for Claudine, so her mini skirt will incorporate that. Rip tights under sleek patent leather boots to elongate the leg and to tie in her entire outfit together. With that being said, let's do our fang and get into it. So here we have the new G3 Claudine Wolf doll and as you can see I put the fur back and everything just so we can see her in her full glory. And um, yeah, I'm not really a fan. <laughs> Aside from the fur, um, vest, by the way, which I don't, you know, I'm not really a fan of fur vest. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fan of, I mean, it's so colorful. We've always talked about how the new G3 is just way too colorful. Um, so we're gonna mute it, so, you know, a lot. And, um, yeah, but I really, really like this doll. Um, like, you know, she has a good layout. Her face is really nice. I love the sculpt of her face. And, of course, I love the new ears. I like how huge they are. And I like how they are permanent. The fur ruffs are really cool, too. Although, sometimes, in some angles, they look like ears. But, um, yeah. Overall, this doll is really, really nice. It's just really, like, the colors and the fashion choices are a little bit just it's just not my style personally um so let's go ahead and remove everything and you know we're, let's prepare our canvas this doll has beautiful like rosy kind of like lavender hair I am so in love with the color. I just feel like it's just not Claudine. Um, I prefer her with like really like lots of brown, lots of dark hair, um, more, you know, more dark hair for her. So we're going to go ahead and do that. But look at this doll. Look at this head. Actually, it kind of looks like a bat. Like without the hair, she kind of looks like a bat. Um, character so that could be an also you know that could also be an idea for the future but um yeah this doll has really really great head sculpt now I'm gonna go ahead and take my yarn and over here I'm using these two colors over here and the, the other one is like chocolate brown the other one is more of like a lighter kind of grayish brown very cool tone and also very warm tone and for that I'm just gonna go ahead and prepare it by um, detangling it so for this one, I'm actually not going to be using a um, straightener. I definitely want a more natural texture for her hair. So as you can see here, I have all of them kind of blended together and I'm just taking my plastic pet brush over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and detangle it. And that's pretty much it. You know, I really like the natural waves that this uh, yarn gives us and I love the blend of those two colors. I like the natural kind of like highlight that it gives. Now let's go ahead and cut it and make yarn wefts with it. As you can see, I just have it here. I used my hot glue method and we're pretty much ready to give her a new uh, wig, you know, new hair. 
So over here I made this uh, wig cap and specifically it is made for her because of her ears. So as you can see there are some areas there that needed to be cut so it fits. But let's go ahead and start from the bottom by um, the back of her neck and work our way up. And for this one, because the, the yarn webs are pretty thick, you don't really have to cover everything. I just like to do so because um, I'm just paranoid like that. I don't want to see like the scalp and everything. So yeah, but you don't really have to. At this point, she actually looks a lot like like this um, yarn and the texture. She actually looks like the the live action of Claudine, like the um, the live action movie. But let's go ahead and take my razor, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the wolf cut cut. So it's pretty much like a mullet. So really, really like short layers and then you leave the very, very back under um, layer to be very long. So it's kind of like the Asian mullet, um, but it's just really updated. So as you can see, like the front layers are really, really short. Um, you can go shorter actually, but you know, we're still going for like the 70s type of flip. So over here, I'm just kind of curling that as well and uh, making it flip. Um, to the outside, like outside of her face. So yeah, it's really like a combination of both. But as you can see, it is really, really nice. It is very mullety. So yeah, you can go shorter if you'd like, but I really like this length on her. And now we're pretty much done with her wig, so let's go ahead and move on to her face. Over here, I'm just taking my acetone. You may also use nail polish remover if it has acetone in it. And we are going to be removing her factory paint. Now we're done, let's go ahead and spray her face with Mr. Super Clear to prime it and also to set it afterwards. But this will make our vinyl head um, drawable, sketchable, and paintable, pretty much, you know? It will give it a new texture, uh, a very paper-like texture. So now let's take my watercolor pencil. Um, over here, I'm just using this brown color to sketch out the face, the new eyes, and all of the details that I want her to have. And of course, we're giving her the smize. You guys know how I love the smize. And um, yeah, this is just style. Of course, a very, very sharp wing wolf liner <laughs> cut, uh, cat eye over here is always necessary for anything that I do. And for her eyebrows, I actually want to give her a specific expression. Um, in the original, she always kind of had a smirk. So I thought that would be really, really cool to give this doll is kind of like the smirk expression. So here I, I gave her that. And I think it really brings out her personality as well. Now let's go ahead and draw on those features. Of course, she has kind of like a golden eye, so I'm going in with yellow first to really put that base on. And um, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and work on like adding the colors, adding those hues and tones and all of that um, layer by layer. For darker skin tone dolls, you don't really want to highlight with white. You want to make sure that you're making it very, very warm. So over here, I'm just taking kind of like a yellow brown um, kind of like highlighter to highlight her brow bone. And then I'm going to go ahead and blend that in. And then after that, you can go in with a more beige color to really emphasize the highlight. Do you guys like the new G3 Claudine in terms of personality and fashion? I still don't know how to feel about it, but I do love her new song.
I gave her purple eyeshadow because obviously that is Claudine's color scheme. So, and I think purple really looks good on her too. Now let's go ahead and work on her lips and over here I'm just going in with this cherry red lipstick. I am going to make it darker, however um, I think this is a good base for her lips just to kind of gauge how I would want like her overall makeup to look. Um, I'm not really a big fan of like a bold color for both the lips and also the eyeshadows so over here I'm trying to make it more smoky for the eyeshadow. Um, just because this is way too colorful, it's giving G3 vibes, and I wanted to make it G1 vibes. You know, like, my style of G1. I wasn't really a fan of the wolf nose that she got, but I am a fan of the freckles. So here I am going to give her lots of freckles, because why not? It looks really, really good on her. I want to make her eyes look like they're glowing, so over here I'm just highlighting them with white. And I feel like that really will give it the, the glowing golden eye, werewolf eye that Claudine has. Over here I'm just adding more dimension to her eyeshadow by darkening it and making it more kind of like smoky a bit without taking out the hues and the colorfulness of the purple eyeshadow. So I'm pretty much just like framing it. Now it's time for this beautiful wing liner. You guys know I love a sharp wing. So you know, she may be a werewolf but she needs some good wings. I'm adding some purple pastels to her lips to give it more dimension so it doesn't look too flat. And also this will make it more darker. Um, I really like defining the lips, I don't like it to be too flat. So I'm also taking my pencils to give those like lip lines, the natural lip lines. I'm going also over it with um, black to really deepen that like line, the lip line. So yeah. Now it's time for the blush. I can't believe I almost forgot about blushing and I'm just blushing her cheeks, her nose, her forehead, her chin. You guys know, I go over with my blush. Later I'm gonna be blushing her ears too because I almost forgot about that. So <laughs> I was like, something is, something is different and I realized I did not like blush and like contour her ears. So I'm gonna be doing that as well as you can see over here. And now it's time to give her some fangs. And over here, um, I mean, you know what? I was going to give her like the upside down fangs, the one that goes to her top lip, but I wasn't sure if that was gonna look good. But this one was like, hmm, I mean, now she definitely looks like a vampire when like she doesn't have hair. Like just give her a bath wing and she'll look like a vampire. Um, but overall it did give uh, a wolf look in the end. So it was fine. Of course, it wouldn't be a custom of mine without a good highlighter. So again, I'm just using my resin metallic pigments over here and I'm just giving her gold. It's just gold. Usually I mix several colors of highlighter, but for this one, it's just gold. I want her to have gold in her cheeks and also in her eyes. So I put that in her eyes as well. Now it's time to work on the catch lights in her tear ducts, you know, the highlights in there, and also the catch lights in her eyes. I wanted her to have a crescent moon in her eye, but I thought the white was a little bit too harsh and it was kind of like taking away from her overall eyes. Like, it was too distracting. So in the end, I'm gonna go ahead and put powder on top of this, yellow powder and also gold powder, to kind of blend it in with her entire eye. And it actually looks really cool. It looks like it's glowing 
like really, really well. Now it's time for the lashes. You guys know, um, same old, same old. We're using my individual fake human lashes, and I believe each eye had nine, um, like lashes. So we have 18 um, overall. Now it's time to gloss up her lips. Now let's go ahead and put her wig on so we can kind of like have an idea of how she looks. And as you can see, this one is a bit of a challenge to put in there because of her ears, but it fits so so good and she looks amazing but I do want to give her some kind of like roots over here some black roots just to give her wig some more dimension um, in terms of color and now we're finally done with Miss Claudine's face and also hair and she looks so fierce and iconic and I am Oh my god, I'm obsessed with her expression. Like, this is the Claudine that I know. Very fierce, very elegant, very glam, but like, just, ah, she looks so, so good. She looks so, so, like, just fun and confident, and, um, yeah. And here is a before and after, so we can see, um, the evolution of G3 and my version of G3. Now let's go ahead and work on her outfit. Now this one is a lot of upcycling. Um, so this is a jacket, I believe, from one of the Bratz boys. Um, I forget which which character this belongs to, maybe Cameron or Eaton or, I don't know, Kobe. But this one is really, really nice. I love the crack leather. And I love how the leather, when it cracks, it has like, it creates this kind of like red tone inside. Um, of course, it doesn't really fit her that well, so I am going to go ahead and turn the sleeves over and we are going to be trimming it and just kind of resizing the sleeves. Um, the overall jacket fits really, really well. That's how I want it to fit, kind of like baggy and more modern, but the sleeves are a little bit too baggy. So over here, I'm just kind of like shaping it, as you can see, and I'm going to go ahead and sew that. And as you can see, this is how the jacket looks. The sleeve fits so much better. Um, we are going to be working on the back of this jacket because um, I do want to kind of give it more of an hourglass type of look and to open up the jacket more. But now let's go ahead and give it the fur. Um, this fur, I believe I got it either from Michael's or the other one that shall not be named. And I dyed it purple. Um, I did not get it on camera, but I dyed it purple and also black, and as you can see, it took in the color so, so well. I love how it came out. It did change the material a bit, like how it looks, so I just used my metallic pet brush to kind of brush it up. Um, but of, of course, because it's plastic, and we, because we put it in hot water, like boiling water, it definitely changes the material, so be careful with that. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut this, I really like this fur because it's short and it has the, I believe, leopard print on it. So I was like, oh my god, that is so perfect for her. I'm gonna trim it on the ends, on the edge. I'm gonna trim it on the the sleeves and also her collar. We're gonna put this this fur everywhere. Now we have the trio, who should I make next? Comment them down below. I have Cleo, I have Laguna. Do I have Gulia? I don't have Gulia. Okay. I have Laguna, I have <laughs> I have Cleo. 
<laughs> and then as you can see over here, I am just sewing the back of her um, just to give it that shape. And I really like how that looks. I want to really use her jumper. Um, I wanted to incorporate some G3 elements in there and I was like, hmm, how can I incorporate her overalls, the short overalls over here? So first I need to make it more muted because right now it's like lavender, purple, pink. So I put it in the black red dye and we're going to go ahead and mute those colors in there. I definitely don't want it to be su super black where you can see the animal prints. But over here, I'm just cutting these shorts and I'm opening it up. And we're going to be using this as her skirt, as her mini skirt. I'm just turning the overalls inside. And um, this is kind of how I gauge how short I want it to be. Of course, it's going to be like a mini skirt. So... I was kind of like just kind of gauging that and then after that I'm gonna go ahead and sew up the the skirt shut After you're done, let's go ahead and turn it inside out and cut the excess fabric, like the top portion of this overalls. And voila, we have a skirt. Um, I do want to kind of make it more detangled and everything, fray it a bit underneath. I feel like that will really kind of help give the punk edgy vibes for Miss Claudine. <laughs> Now let's go ahead and work on her boots. Over here, I'm just tracing the new G3 feet. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find shoes for the G3 Monster High dolls. So I was like, well, I gotta make the shoes myself, you know, which is fine. I like making shoes. It does take a while. But over here, I really want it to be very, very exaggerated and long. So I'm just cutting this template out from a piece of paper. Now I'm taking my Warbla, my thermoplastic board over here that is heat activated and then I'm just tracing the, the template on it. And overall we need four of these um, technically. One to go inside the, the boot and one to go outside to act as a sole. <laughs> So here I mark the left and right so that I don't get confused because sometimes they do look the same. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take my heat gun to activate these thermoplastic. And as you can see, it becomes really, really malleable and bendable. It actually becomes sticky as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shape that onto Claudine's foot. After it cools down, you can ha you can take it out, and as you can see, I have the template of the soles here. And now I'm gonna go and kind of hot glue that here, um, just so that it is temporarily glued onto her feet. And I am taking my patent pleather fabric over here. This one's really nice. It's so shiny and like pitch black, which I really love. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that inside out and um, sew her. Um, her new boots. I definitely want this to be like a um, knee-high boots. I feel like knee-high boots are so so nice. It's really 70s. It's really 2000s and I am obsessed. And I'm sewing this all the way to her toes. And as you can see, because we put the uh, the warbla inside, when you sew it, it really takes in the shape of the warbla. Now 
Now let's go ahead and remove that um, a little bit of uh, tugging and pushing and this one was kind of like a, a challenge to turn the the boot inside out because it was very very tight so just be very careful with that and as you can see we have the boots um, it's kind of looked like a sock um, I put it back onto her and now I am gluing the warbler for the sole the second piece of the warbler onto it and I'm just gonna be using super glue You want to make sure you are gluing um, in parts. So first, I'm going to be gluing kind of like the tip of like the bottom of the foot. And then later, after that's dry, I'm going to be gluing the heel part. This part definitely takes a lot of patience, but in the end, it would look really, really good. And voila! Look at that! It looks so so nice! Oh my god, it's so sleek! Oh my god, imagine if it's all black! Now I'm just taking my needle um, pin over here and this will act as our heel. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it. And so far this is what we have. You may leave it like this if you'd like, but I want the heel to look like a heel and not like a needle. So let me go ahead and tape everything up and here I am using my industrial glue. This is like an epoxy glue. This is the first time I'm using it as a heel because I was like, I can use epoxy sculpt clay, but um, I'm kind of lazy. So I was like, maybe this will work and it did. You can sand it, you can do everything to it. So it's perfect for heel making. And now that it's dried, we can finally paint it. And of course, we're going with black heel, you know, patent black um, because why not and don't be alarmed we will be giving her some red bottoms of course if there's a reason to give red bottoms I will be I will make up a reason <laughs> and we're finally done with boots it is all dried up and it looks super cool I definitely want something like this for myself oh my god so so nice I love how exaggerated and long the toes are I feel like it's so high fashion and um, yeah, I'm obsessed. Now let's go ahead and dress her up. And I made some tights behind the scene because you guys know me, if there is some sewing um, that, is in, that is in need of sewing, I do it behind the scenes. There's no point of showing my struggle. <laughs> so yeah, let's go ahead and dress her up. Oh my god, the fact that the fact that you guys are saying that it's not even like a full tights, like like it's literally like a tube. Um, yes, that's that's my you know that's my sewing abilities. I can make a tube. Anything that is like pillowcasey, I can I can sew it. But anything that requires like a specific pattern, yeah, I pass on that. But I mean, it works. It works for Claudine. It works for Claudine. You know. And now I'm just taking my scissors and we're ripping this up. It is better to rip the tights while the doll is wearing it, just so you know where to rip. So just be very careful. Uh, make sure they're they're wearing it. Um, but yeah, I thought this is really, really cool. It really gives it more... It's kind of like an animal print without making it an animal print because it's like slashes or like zebra prints or something like that. Um, but it looks really, really cool. And I am kind of like sewing it a little bit, well, fake sewing it, just so um, it has some dimensions of like flaring and fraying here and there. This mesh top is actually from Chloe, I believe, from the Bratz. So, you know what? Actually, this doll has a lot of Bratz um, outfit in her. A lot of upcycling, like I said. And I believe that this top is either from Jade or Chloe. I think it's Chloe, too. Um, but yes, I thought this was a perfect bralette. Um, that's leather, and the outfit itself looks really, really cool. For her accessories, I'm using these three um, earring thingy. Um, the other one is an actual earring. The other one is um, a jewelry ho hoop. And the other one is a jewelry um, pendant. So these are all gold. I feel like anyone can, if Claudine was gonna have a medal, it'll be gold. Um, 
because I feel like that matches her. And then I, I did pierce some of her ears a little bit more to add more earrings in there. But yes, I love having this hoop there. I feel like it looks so, so cool. And um, yeah. I do like this belt that she came with because it has kind of like the moon phases there and it's like a chain belt. I am aging it a little bit because it's supposed to be gold but it looks too plastic so by dry brushing it with black um, I feel like it brings out all of the details and make it a little bit more metallic. Now let's go ahead and put on her jacket. Oh my god, it's coming together you guys but of course we have to paint her claws. Um, I love her hands um, and I love the nails and of course we have to give her purple nails. I, want, I do want to give her some rings as well because I've been doing that for Frankie and also um, Miss Draculaura so I was like why not let's give her some rings. And that's pretty much it for Miss Claudine. Now let's go ahead and work on her phone. Now, from all of the phone designs, I do like how this one has like an animal holding the phone, but the back of it is a little bit too busy. There's the leopard print, there's the moon, there's the slashes. I'm like, I don't know which one to bring out. I don't know which one to color. And you guys know me, I'm pretty, like I said, I'm pretty minimal with like making it multicolored. I feel like that is too much. So I started with black first, I was like let's go ahead and have a clean slate, make it black and see which one to highlight. And overall I ended up dry brushing the leopard area with the purple to match her nails. And I was like okay that's cool, it brought out the leopard. And I was like hmm, I don't know, we need to paint, paint the moon's gold, I feel like that will make it look really really cool. So overall, I was just like, okay, let's just paint everything gold, I guess, to bring it out, but I'm not happy with it. I mean, it's okay. I just wish it was either the slash marks or the moon. I don't know. I do like this wolf, I'm assuming, that is holding the phone. I thought that was really nice. I tried looking for the eyes, but I feel like it doesn't have an eye <laughs> um, sculpt. So I was like, well, okay, well... Okay, I guess no eyes for you. But I thought gilding it with gold would look really, really nice anyway. Again, let's go ahead and dry brush the entire phone case just to make it more aged and to bring out those details. And with that, we're finally done with Claudine Wolfe.